All right, at 5.33, oh, I am going to call the Board of Finance to order. You may uh, have noticed our usual chair, the mayor, is zooming in. He is uh, under the weather. Um, so asked if I would uh, be the chair. It's a slightly less awkward to do it in person and have him zooming in. So we'll see how I do. I'm sure he'll correct me as needed. Um, we also have Councillor Hightower joining remotely. Our newest member of the Board of Finance, Councillor McGee, warm welcome. Unfortunately, Councillor Jang cannot make it to Board of Finance. So I believe we are all here. Um, the first item on the agenda is a motion on the agenda. Is anyone ready to make one? Uh, motion to go. Motion to go. Motion to adopt the agenda. Thank you. Um, any comments? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any aye. Vote? And the motion passes unanimously. The second item is public forum. Um, is there anybody in the public wishing to speak? If you are on Zoom, you may use the raise hand function. Seeing no one, we will move on to the consent agenda. And there's also no one in the queue on the spreadsheet as well. Excellent. Thank you. Um, is there a motion on the consent agenda? I would move to adopt the consent agenda and take the actions that take it. That's great. Is there a second? I'll second. I don't know if you, I don't know if it's a technicality given the fact that um, we're adopting the minutes. Not sure if you want myself and perhaps Councillor Hightower or the mayor to make that only because yes, Councillor Hightower yes. was not here. Why don't we do that? So you can make the next. You can make the next motion. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'll make the motion to uh, adopt the consent agenda. Take the actions. Great. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Councillor Hightower. Any questions or comments? All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. That is unanimous. The next item is item 4.01. Um, this is a CT item, creation of three clerk treasurer positions and moving one position from part-time to full-time. I will give a quick um, briefing on this. We have a lot of items to get through. As you probably saw in the packet, um, we're looking to create three different positions. The first is a retirement administrator. Uh, this is at the recommendation of the retirement committee. It's very similar to a position that we used to have. We thought we might not need um, when we brought on H and H. Turns out we do. Um, this will be paid for by the retirement fund. The grants accountant position is one that we've talked about several times in this venue. Um, it's one that has been recommended by the auditor. Um, it will be paid for out of ARPA in the first year and then out of um, whatever the pool of grants that we have received that need to be accounted for in future years. Um, and then the third position is um, an operations director position. And this is also somewhat similar um, to past positions in the CT office. Um, and this is to have um, someone of a higher level um, overseeing the clerk side um, and to make sure that we are really providing um, important leadership under customer service, land records, records management. Um, and this came out of a study uh, that we had done by an organization called CLA. Um, and this was their recommendation. Um, and uh, the CT group um, strongly endorses it. It's something that because we've had a lot of turnover people um, leaving at a high position when they retire and we're recruiting in people um, at a lower grade or step, we're able to make this um, 
proposal without raising our structural budget. The last um, piece of this puzzle is we have an accounting assistant currently working 32 hours a week. Um, we have need of that position 40 hours a week. That can also be um, absorbed within our budget. And I'm happy to answer any questions or if you're ready for a motion, um, we could take that as well. I'm happy to, oh, I'm happy to move to approve and recommend that the city council also approve the four changes as listed on board docs. Great, second. Thank you. Any um, discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? And the motion carries unanimously. The next item is the records management system purchase. And we have Chief Lock here. Do you want to give us a brief overview, Chief Lock? Absolutely. Uh, so we have used the same records management system since the early to late 90s, late, late 1990s. Um, and that system has, we've been notified by the vendor, there's no longer going to be supported and they're phasing it out. And they had automatically shipped you to their new product, uh, costing in the low 20,000s annually, given that we used to spend about 7,500, but the system really wasn't kept up to date. Long story short, we put out an RFP, our employees looked, uh, demoed several different products. This is the records management system that we believe will take us into the future. This is everything from documenting our incidents to tracking our inventory to the work of the fire marshal's office doing inspections. Uh, this has been coordinated with the uh, IT department. So Scott is supportive of this purchase. And, and it does change away from uh, fee the way they used to do paying for annual maintenance, which was kind of somewhat flat. Uh, they've more moved to like the Microsoft model that you may be used to at home where they're billing you annually for a subscription. Uh, this is a cloud-based software system. So it meets our need from everything from patient care reporting to inventory tracking, fire marshal's office, and then our daily uh, call volume. So uh, that's what this is. And it's uh, setting up, we know our, our pricing for over five years. We are working with Scott to try to get a longer term known of the price as well as some other incentives that uh, Scott was putting keying us on to. But we are, this is somewhat time sensitive. The old program shuts down December 31st. And as you can imagine, implementing something like this is gonna take some time. So uh, we, we, we hope to, by moving quickly, we can achieve that purchase. Are we ready for a motion? So I'm happy to make a motion um, as recommended in board docs. And, uh, Kudos to you, I guess, for keeping a piece of software that's by about 25 years old. Uh, certainly, certainly more than time to move yeah, on. Yeah, it's painful, but this yeah. will be better. Thank you. It, it will be. I'm sure change is always painful. Transition is painful, but got to do it sometime. Yeah, yes, no, absolutely. So. It's more painful that we've stuck with this for so long. <laughs> <laughs> with that said, I'll make that motion. Is there a second? Second. Any questions? All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. And the motion carries unanimously. And the next item is the ambulance fee increase. So as you may or may not be aware, we bill patients for ambulance transports. And so we transport on uh, last year, a little over 3,500 patients, generates about 1.6 million in revenue. About 86% of our patients are Medicare and Medicaid. So that means there's a fixed amount which the government reimburses us for. Anything above for that, we have to write off. As part of uh, the budget uh, process for FY23, the fire department was asked to look at a way of either reducing our expenses or generating about 335,000 more in revenue in order to offset uh, some of the, without having the tax increase. We're comfortable uh, between uh, updating our projections and this modest increase in our rates that this will generate about an additional 90,000, but in its totality will allow us to achieve our $335,000 target without making any operational reductions. We're about 98% fixed costs between personnel, benefits, and power, a water, all those other bills that we, so any uh, reduction for us really means we have to move people. 
we're, we're a people-centered department. So we believe that this is a good way to achieve our benchmark without having to make service reduction. It impacts a small portion of our transports, about 13%. You should understand that we don't do aggressive collections. In fact, we send you a bill twice. If you don't pay it, you never hear from us again. Um, and so, so it really is, but we do not harass people. If you, and we have a waiver process so people can request. They usually have about once a month, someone will submit, I can't afford to pay the bill. We automatically say, if, as long as you, you go through and submit us the stuff, we, we waive your bill. So uh, we don't, so a long way of saying this generates, I think is a win-win for everybody, still fits within what our billing provider would say is the acceptable range for angle services. Long way of saying we need this in order to prevent <laughs> staff cuts. Uh, are we ready for a motion or any questions? Yes. Yes. Councillor Bergman has some questions. Can I ask them? I'm not on the board. It's a little unusual, but I'm going to allow it, Councillor Berkman. Um, well, this will uh, this will maybe avoid us asking questions yes. at the full council. Exactly. That's why I'm I, like I, I actually. So, how time sensitive is this, Chief? So, understand that we lag. Um, if we transfer you today, usually you're not getting a bill for about a month. And then by the time we get the revenue in, so our time sensitivity is that our budget projection for FY23 is based upon us receiving that revenue starting in July. So in order to start that window, we need to be able to start this within the next 30 days. If we were to make this decision on the 25th, would that be? Would not, would, would not change at the end of the day. Anything. Because uh, the questions I have relate to getting information having read your, your memo, I'm curious about the charges that are being um, uh, made or for, you know, the charges for all the neighboring towns, you do mention a few of them, but it would be helpful, I think, for people to understand where we sit in relationship to our neighbors. If you have that. I, I have it on my phone, I, but unfortunately, I can, I, I can I, email it to you right now. Yeah, you know, I, you know so, um, I, the, I will just say this, the different, you know, and not to the, just so you understand, right, there is uh, a service, there's a lot of things that go into a cost for the service, right, whether, as you are well aware, whether it's a full paid service, um, and what the, we, although we do not base our cost matrix off what our call, we would lose money on every run, or it would just, or, or the cost of the call would be what the billing provider would say is uncustomarily high. Okay, I, I, I mean, I have a, a number of questions and I, 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 I am inclined actually to hope that this could maybe get pushed back, even if, if at the council level, if not here, that would be, that would be fine. And I don't, you know, I, I'm not trying to monopolize anybody's time, but there are a few more detailed questions, which I'm sure are readily available, but not immediately. No, not, I mean, just for my speaking for myself, I mean, uh, the you know we did. Um, I was asked if this could be a concurrent item, and seeing that I it didn't appear that there would be a reason not to, but it is certainly the purview of any counselor to take that off the consent agenda and put it on deliberative, just for this purposes of making for a smoother meeting. We will when we go to the consent agenda, we'll simply I will let Lori know that that's removed, and we'll discuss that on the twenty fifth. No problem. That would be great. And if that happens, I can give you my my questions offline and everything can keep moving. Okay. I, 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 I don't suspect that there will be a problem that I'll have on the 25th, but I do feel an obligation to do some due diligence here. That's what you're here for. That's what they said. <laughs> so in the Absolutely. meantime, yes, Mayor. So I, I just want to confirm, Chief, it sounds like you're confirming that if this was done on the 25th, that would not create a uh, major problem. Is that, can we hear you correctly? That is correct. I really need to have it in place by May 15th or so. I think in order to, to hit our window of where we're, we're expecting to receive the revenues. Okay. All right. So it sounds like um, that's fine for this time. I, I would just uh, 
you know, certainly it's great you're here, Councilor Bergman at the Board of Finance. We like having uh, councilors um, come to the Board of Finance discussions and it's always appropriate to engage in these discussions that you're always invited in. It is helpful if we get, if there are gonna be questions at the Board of Finance that are not gonna be immediately answerable, um, uh, it's ideal if it's, it's, it's optimal if you're able to uh, communicate those ahead of time so we can work to uh, get them addressed and be able to take action at the Board of Finance because often it is a delay does have some kind of material impact. So, um, Mr. Mayor, uh, getting this on Friday and the first week after being sworn in uh, creates some, some logistical difficulties I'm sure you can appreciate. That's right. Although that is the schedule, we, we typically, these board of items, like the whole system depends on us putting them out on Friday and then being able to take action on Monday. Um, so uh, it does put burdens on us all to keep that for sure. But it sounds like tonight, this is uh, not a problem uh, to delay it. So we will. Um, Councillor Hightower. Thanks. Yeah. And actually, I was also going to comment on this. I had a few counselors who had questions on this, including myself. Um, and yeah, I think just because the proposed increase is so significant, averaging anywhere from 15 to 22 percent, which even over a three year time period seems high. And then, you know, one of the things we're comparing to is UVM rescue, which by my understanding, UVM generally, and I don't know how that compares to their rescue, but has um, unusually high rates. So I think this was something I would have flagged as well this time, um, just because we are doing such a big jump. And I think I would want to see more of both how we compare it to other folks and um, what, what we expect the impact of this to be on other people, especially um, that self-pay. But yeah, I know it's only 3% of the total, but what that means for those folks, so. I, I also had some questions that I'd love to follow up on, and I didn't. And, and there is no, um, just, so, just for clarification, there is no tie between UVM Rescue and UVM the hospital. So UVM Rescue is a completely volunteer, student-run ambulance service with their, um, that expense or their revenue going back into, it's a student club. So there is no tie between the two. Got it. Thank you. That's a good clarification for me. would the board like to move forward on this item this evening? Catherine, I, I think we should, we should, we should, we should um, a table the discussion until the 25th and, and there will be uh, an, revisit it. Back to board of finance. Yeah, it's actually postponing. We are postponing, thank you, um, for both the board and then I'll let y'all handle city council. Great, thank you. You're welcome. Item 4.04, .04, a significant yet budget neutral amendment for the airport. Acting Director Wongo is making his way up here along with Marie. You guys like to give us a very brief overview. Yeah, absolutely. I'll start and then you can fill in any details, uh, Marie. Uh, so it is a significant budget amendment and uh, typically this time of year you might see one or a few budget amendments as we realize some of our actual expenses and in this case uh, increases in revenues. Uh, one item I will call out, which is the largest item in this particular uh, expense amendment, is our runway de-icing material. That's, that's more than half of this entire budget amendment. Uh, the team has worked incredibly hard to maintain and uh, maintain an open runway environment, which requires this specific material to be um, uh, supported out on the runway system. In fact, this year, we not only used a solid type of material, very similar to a salt, but less, uh, less corrosive, uh, we also used a new formula, which is a liquid material, same same type of uh, material. Uh, and that is uh, what you see as uh, just over $180,000 as part of this expenditure uh, increase. Uh, we've had incredibly long and challenging ice events on that runway, hence those additional material costs. Uh, the good news here is 
along with those other relatively smaller expense increases. The good news is our rental car concession revenue is incredibly high this year. Uh, so we are able to create this budget neutral amendment, both on an increase in an expense and an increase on the additional revenue that we've seen, uh, realizing all of those particular items. Well, that is good news. It's very good. Nice. Would anyone like to make the motion? Councillor Hightower has. Yes, Councillor Hightower. Question, or would you like to make a motion? That was an old hand, but I'm happy to. <laughs> <laughs> you got to be careful with those old hands. <laughs> I'll move to um, approve and recommend that the city council approve the budget neutral amendment as listed on board docs. Thank you. Is there a second? Great. Thank you, Councilor McKee. Any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? And the motion carries unanimously. The next item is execution of a lease with Vermont Flight Academy also with the airport. Perfect, so I'm, I'm very happy, Shelby and I are very happy to uh, uh, bring you this first lease agreement with our Valley tenants. Uh, if you remember a few months ago, uh, we had some of our tenants uh, in, in this room as well as at the city council meeting um, concerned over their future in that particular geographic area at the airport. Uh, Vermont Flight Academy is an incredibly important tenant of ours, not only providing that educational component, uh, but also a part 141 school, which is a much uh, uh, an increased structured school for our future pilots in the aviation system. In fact, I went to one of those uh, part 141 schools. Um, uh, I am incredibly to announce with, with partnership from Tom D'Urso, who I don't see on tonight, but I did invite uh, here tonight. Uh, Tom D'Urso is the executive director for Vermont Flight Academy. We've worked over the last uh, few months uh, to work on this particular lease to secure their lease premises for the next five years in the same location. As I presented uh, a few months ago, there is and are, are no uh, immediate changes to that valley area. And in fact, this is the first of a few leases coming to this board, as well as the city council over the coming weeks uh, in, into May. Uh, Vermont Flight Academy, it, this essentially is a status quo lease. It's a brand new lease uh, within the city of Burlington uh, because we're actually signed this lease through Heritage Aviation. So now this is uh, officially a city of Burlington lease agreement with the Vermont Flight Academy. Great. Councilor Paul, Tony, congratulations. Yeah, this is great. I'm sure that if this were a challenging issue, the people from the Flight Academy would be here this evening. And the fact that they're not is a sign that you found an agreement, which is wonderful. Um, so, with that said, I am happy to make the motion as recommended on board talks. Is there a second? Second. Great. Thank you. Any further discussion? I just have a question, um, which is just to, and I apologize, I've not been following the issue with the leases at the airport so closely, but just making sure. So Nick, just asking you, I guess, this is, this is just, I guess, to what extent is this continuing what we currently have and are any of the other tenants <laughs> upset about this lease or anything along those lines, as far as you know? Uh, as far as I know, uh, the, the other tenants are very amenable to this lease because it does provide that ecosystem, for, particularly in the valley area, uh, that they enjoy and they also uh, use as a pipeline for their educational components of, of their particular businesses. Uh, uh, this is, like I said, this is in the existing hangar that they currently operate from um, and will continue for that five year period. Uh, the other tenants, uh, such as the Hangar Condo Associates, Aerodyne, Mansfield Heliflight are also undergoing uh, direct negotiations with our city attorney's office and myself um, to secure and, and uh, bring forth uh, before you their leases as well for their same locations in that 
uh, area of the airport as well. So I, th this is this is an incredibly successful, I would say, lease agreement with VFA, but also sets us up for additional lease agreements uh, with those other tenants as well. Great, thanks for going a little bit more into that background. That, that's it for me. Of course. All right, um, we have a first and a second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? And it carries unanimously. Thank you. It's time for everyone's favorite part of foreign finance, the DPW portion. Oh, please. <laughs> Many oh, agenda please. items long. <laughs> and we're going to start yeah. with the fifth, the fifth amendment to the agreement between the University of Vermont and the city regarding the city's 10-year capital plan. Yep. Um, so where are we locked, DPW? If I can start, we also have UVM representation here, Lisa Kingsbury, um, and the attendees list Adam Frazier, so that they can provide um, some updates we got earlier today as well. Um, if it's friendly, uh, we'll speak to actually the two items for University Place, kind of at yes. the same point in time to get the yep. introduction done. Um, so we're here tonight to amend our agreement with UVM to afford the opportunity to complete University Place, which is the next contract on the agenda. Um, when we were before the council uh, about this time last year, we had adjusted our agreement to put some maximum limiting amounts going in to and through the design. And since that point in time, um, we've also added in some water resources work. There are natural cost increases that have happened um, substantially over the last year, but also uh, it's happening week by week. So, natural cost increases as well. yeah. so we are looking to amend our agreement to afford what we have as as bid prices for the university place, um, which is the next item that speaks to both the contractor cost, our resident engineering cost, our electric department to install decorative lighting on the street. Um, We'll have a communication, I believe, at your next meeting that will speak to the underground findings of an underground and hearing committee that happened uh, to ensure that utilities on the street do stay underground from this point into the future. So keep it simple. I'll leave it there and let you guys ask questions. Yes, Councillor Hightower. And I'm sorry, just because there was movement, I didn't actually catch everything that you just said, so it's possible that you address this. Um, I guess from my reading of it, the cost went, I think from, is it, was it like $1.2 million to like almost three times that? And I didn't get a sense of how much of that is just because what we had planned was that much more expensive or how much, to what extent the plans changed. Um, Yep. So um, since we went in front of the two uh, and the council the last time to the concept, the concept has not changed or downgraded at all. Um, the estimates at the time were a 25% level of effort. And so there's a lot of variability when you provide a, a total budget at that phase. So there's some natural errors that happen within that amount of the number. A lot of it is, is material cost increases from this time last year to this time now. Um, and then, yeah, just some other uh, more specific or more specifics on how to complete the work. The water resources portion is also a significant amount. Originally, we were going to run that as a separate contract outside of doing the street reconstruction work. And as we worked with the item um, with UVM, we just saw efficiencies and kind of combining it, keeping it together. Okay, so sorry if I can just reiterate what I just heard about a few. So the concept didn't change, but it does include kind of the water resources piece that previously it did not. So that's a chunk of the cost. Um, and I guess just to understand, and maybe I also have a broader question, which I don't know if you can answer, but like, I guess what portion of it is like kind of the adding of the water resources piece and what portion is the adding of the materials and then I guess how worried are we about if if it because I mean it's such so much more than we had anticipated like are we worried that everything that we budgeted is now going to be twice as much and how many projects do we have in the pipeline that are going to be affected in the same way. We, we are certainly feeling that uh, with our bid prices this spring, one of your other agenda items uh, that Philip and Porter will speak to for paving will reflect that. Um, and we will also have an item at your next 
meeting to, to speak to sidewalks while well, that one wasn't as large of an increase of an item. Um, it is being felt across the board, not just within the city of Burlington, but also statewide in the bid prices that are coming in. Federally too. Yeah, and federally as well. So there is, there is a good portion of that in there. Um, materials like cement that goes into concrete is being limited to the supplier. So SDI Ireland, who is a concrete company, won't be able to get enough product probably to complete all of the yeah. projects they had hoped to complete this season. Um, it relates to materials just stone, mining stone, trucking stone, crushing stone, um, all have 25 to 30% cost increases <clears throat> on their item. It's, it's a hard time to do construction work right now. Some costs rise in a matter of days, not even weeks or months, days. Mm -hmm. And then, sorry, just to go back to my original question, how much of this is adding the water resources piece and how much is it like double is the materials cost and then the whatever additional 80% or whatever it is increases water resources? Do you have a sense of that? It's, uh, it's an additional $273,000. It's important to know that, that that's funding is through ARPA as well. Mm -hmm. So I'm sure Chapin can talk to that item a little bit more. Yes, so that, that 273 is from ARPA. That's the smaller portion of a lot of the cost increases driven by these escalators and the inflationary pressures. And on top of every project that uh, our team has mentioned, the Champlain Parkway, which is also being presented tonight, is, uh, is experiencing the same cost pressures. Okay. Thank you. Other questions? Are we ready for a motion? Yes, I would move to take the actions as recommended on board dogs. Is there a second? Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? And that passes unanimously. And I think we could go right into 4.07 since we just talked about that basically concurrently. Is there a motion on that one? I can quickly add, um, UVM had provided us notification today that their board met and also supported uh, the item that we just talked about, um, which then also supports the contract. Councillor McGee. I would move to take the actions as recommended from board folks. Thank you. Is there a second? I'll second. Thank you, President Paul. Any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? <clears throat> and that passes unanimously. All right, Team DPW, let's talk street reconstruction. Don't go anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> so we're here for the uh, and Corey's here. Corey, do you want to speak to this? Yeah, um, so we're here for the CY22 Street Reconstruction uh, Contract Award. Uh, we are looking to award a <clears throat> contract to SD Ireland uh, for this work. Uh, they have done the work previously in previous years, and we are, are bitter for the season as well. Um, as you all know, we last year were decided not to award the construction contract due to pricing uh, with the hopes of being able to do a more robust uh, street reconstruction program this season. Uh, unfortunately, with the pricing, as Laura had indicated earlier, we are seeing that as well within the paving contract. Um, so we are still looking to get a good amount done. However, not as much as we had hoped to do this season. Um, with that, I'd say I'll kind of just leave it open for if there's additional questions regarding the contract um, or the work this season. Any questions? Are we ready for a motion? So, Councilor yeah. So, of the six miles of paving that we're anticipating happening in the season, um, how much are, is this contract? Or is it, uh, Two. Two, 
So within the yeah, within this contract, that's uh, we have two miles. We also additionally have going through other programs in the city with the uh, SRF water contract. There's additional mileage work going in there. Um, I believe Philip, do you have that number? Yeah, we trans, they're they're going to be paving uh, to the okay. classroom road. So basically, from uh, Winooski down Riverside. Uh, Willard to Main Street and the main to the city limits, which is good news. Um, so that all in all, it'll add up to six miles of work. Um, this yeah. might be happening. Are you ready for a motion? I'll move to approve and recommend that the city council um, authorize the CEO or the designee as listed on board docs. <laughs> Great, is there a second? President Paul, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? And the motion carries unanimously. Thank you very much. Thank you. And lastly, DP from you. Um, Requesting City Council endorsement and support for a raise grant application for the redevelopment of the Winooski River Bridge. I'll kick it off and then turn it over to City Engineer Baldwin. Uh, we're constantly uh, struggling with having more need in the city than we financially have the resource to handle ourselves. So we are always looking for other funding. I'm pleased to report that because we worked so well with our partners that we had a very uh, positive couple of months of coordination that's led us here today for an opportunity. I think we're positioned uh, very well. Uh, obviously, you never know with grant applications, but uh, this could be a really exciting partnership with our sister community and be trans. So, so Engineer Baldwin. Yes, yeah, so I would uh, begin by saying that uh, this is not the first time this issue has been discussed in terms of the Whiskey River Bridge. There has been a considerable amount of effort both on Whiskey Park CCRC in the city to uh, examine what options would be appropriate to, to upgrade or replace this bridge. And uh, so there was a planning study that was culminated it's in your memo that frames the alternatives and what this will really produce for both the city of Mooski and the city of Burlington. As it exists, the bridge does not have uh, adequate, in my opinion, pedestrian or cycling facilities. And this will be a big step forward in terms of connecting the two communities and uh, connecting those modes between the two communities, which is, uh, as you know, there's a considerable amount of uh, employment opportunities where people travel between the two communities, and this would uh, open that new opportunity. Um, one thing that we've been doing late is working with the CCRPC, VTRANS, the city of Winooski, along with a consultant, McCarl Johnson, who's been assembling this uh, raise application. And the, as you would note that this raise application has a limit of $25 million. There is uh, an estimate for this project of $31 million. So there's a gap of $6 million. Uh, we discussed some alternatives being um, a bridge grant with these hands and a normal split on that would be 80, 10, 10. We would be likely sharing 5% of that, that 10%. Uh, the state has suggested that this 26 million could be 100%, depending on if it's deemed to be um, a accident prone section or bridge, um, but more likely they'll probably push it to the normal 80, 10, 10 split. So we, we may still have a little more than the uh, differential 6 million with a 5% split and maybe 5% on the 26 million as well. So it's unsettled as yet, but um, without question, we have a project here that is gonna be funded by others. It's gonna be a great value. You know, something that will probably be outside our financial reach. So I would uh, strongly recommend uh, the Board of Finance support this request. Excellent, thank you. Uh, thank you. I'm happy to make the motion. This is really exciting. Yes. And then it's not the end of the journey. It's midway, I guess. Yeah. Um, but yes, I'm happy to make the motion as recommended by four uh, Excellent. <clears throat> is there a second? Any further discussion? 
All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? And the motion carries unanimously. Excellent. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, team. Thank you. Not to be outdone. Team Parks Rec and Waterfront with the one, one item. item. <laughs> it's a really cool item. So, so Sophie will be if anybody has questions. Sophie <laughs> is joining us. Um, would you like to give a 30 second overview, Sophie, of your really cool item? Thanks. Um, I hope you can hear me okay. Um, so, this is the first ask we'll. Uh, be, that we're bringing to you about the universally accessible playground. We're asking to contract with the resident engineer to have him, uh, his team review the uh, contract documents that we're hoping to bid out soon for the playground. And we will be coming back obviously to contract with a construction company to build it, but also to ask for the acceptance of the sub award for the grant that we were told we um, won or succeeded in um, um, uh, securing last year, but uh, we're still waiting on the sub award agreement. But thankfully we have some Penny for Parks funds set aside so that we can at least keep the project moving in the right direction. And uh, hopefully we'll have some good news on the sub award soon and see, see you again here again. Thanks Sophie. Um, is the board ready to make a motion or are there any questions? Move to take the action as we get it on board docs. Excellent. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, President Paul. Any further questions? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? And the motion carries unanimously. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Parks. And you might not need to talk, bring the airport back up. Item 5.02. Um, are we ready to make a motion on money for 9,000 square feet of carpet replacement at the airport? Because anyone who's flown out of the airport knows that we need it. Are we ready for a motion? <laughs> or, I mean, we can bring them back up. No one's flown out of the airport? <laughs> I have, but I actually didn't notice the <laughs> 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 I don't sleep in the room. I can barely tell you what color it is. <laughs> okay, sorry, Nick. I wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's going to be you soon. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we don't want to draw people's attention to it. I'll make that. <laughs> Thank you, President Paul. Sorry. Is there a second? Thank you, Councillor McKee. Any questions or discussion? Uh, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion carries unanimously. We're looking forward to the new carpet. <laughs> <laughs> and the last item on the agenda is one that everyone's super excited about, I'm sure. It's the budget process. I just draw your attention to it to say, please mark your calendars for, for special nights in May. Everyone knows I like to call them the marvelous nights of May. Um, May 11th, 16th, 18th, and 19th will be our department head budget presentations. And then we are going to schedule one additional board of finance meeting because who wouldn't love to spend a lovely early June Monday in here again. So June 13th will be one extra board of finance meeting. We don't have a city council night uh, meeting on that night. Other than that, everything that is on this schedule are things you basically already know about. Are there questions on the calendar? Should probably look pretty familiar to those of you who participated last year. Question. Hi, Howard. Yeah. Yeah, because I didn't participate, I think, until maybe maybe Brian was still in this seat um, last year, yeah. which is just on the departmental budget presentations. 
how far in, in advance are we going to have those before the day, just in terms of our ability to look over it and ask questions, do you expect? That is a great question and is always something that is difficult for me and the department heads to uh, totally put together. Um, any days in advance, but I will be honest with you that it will be rolling. Like you'll have the ones for Wednesday the 11th by that weekend before, but you might not have the ones for the 16th until like the Thursday before, because I'm going to be, we'll be sort of delivering them to you as they're getting closer. Does that make sense? Like they yes. won't all be ready on May 9th. But right, will, absolutely. Yeah. Certainly make sure, you know, I will also make sure that it's not like on May 15th at 8 p.m., people turn in their budgets. You know, I think we need to, and I believe last year we came up with it was two business days or two days ahead, you know, so that um, counselors had time to review. So I'm imagining putting something like that in place. Do you feel like that would work? Yeah, and I think, yes, and one thing that I think would help me a lot in reviewing is if we can make sure to have um, maybe, like, to make sure to have, I don't know if I want actually budgets or actuals um, from both, like, pre-COVID and the year before, um, just so we've got some good comparison, points of comparison. Okay, yeah, that's helpful. Any other questions or comments as we gear up for the budget? Yes, I, thank you. Um, I would just have one and that is, um, you know, not that it, not that it matters, <laughs> but the, um, you know, unfortunately I feel badly the, um, uh, due to a college graduation, I will not be in town on either Wednesday or Thursday, the 18th or 19th of May. Um, I'll try to participate via Zoom, but I'm not sure that I will be able to. Um, and I know that it's always a, st a stressful time. You know, the what will happen is the, the, the departments that are for each night will be listed on board docs, and they will slowly start populating with information. And it is it is a challenge to keep up and, you know, to be able to be prepared, especially when you're talking about three weeks in one week. Yes. Um, there, we've tried it in different ways. This is, it's just a challenge. Um, and um, the only thing that I would ask is that when you do start populate, when you do figure it out, that you try not to have um, departments that are, um, uh, particularly high profile, all going on one night. Yep, got it, that's helpful. I mean, I think so. I mean, that it, yeah. there may be others who might feel differently that be great if you have them all in one night because you know not everyone can make it to each one, but I, I tend to feel like we get overrun and then we're literally here at nine o'clock at night because yeah. we haven't been able to get through it. Yeah. And people have questions. You know? um, also as well, I mean, I know that you have sent it Mail in this memo to the council, I would do it again, yep. um, you know, just so that everyone knows when these dates are so yep. that people will come. It's always great to see more than the board of finance as it is when we have board of finance meetings. Great, I will do that. And sorry, then I have one more stupid question as I'm trying to put these on my calendar. Are these starting at 5 30 usually or? Great question, not stupid, should have been on here. They're gonna start at five and I will add that before I send this out to the larger council. Uh, the department presentation ones in May for sure. As you know, the Board of Finance sometimes for five, sometimes for 5.30, but those May evenings will start at five because as President Paul said, they go long anyway. So let's just start them earlier. It's a good discussion. Any other questions, requests, comments? All 
right. If not, we are adjourned at 623. Thank you very much.